Takuma Sakamoto is a rizless, shut-in geek who spends his time focusing on Diablo, a video game character the otaku has spent his entire life maxing out. After getting isekai'd into Diablo's body while frying his dopamine receptors, he sets out to use his powers as a demon lord to clap anything with a skirt. Due to the fact that his life has been nothing but a pathetic attempt at existence, Takuma, like every other day, shut himself inside to focus on his cross-reverie character, an overpowered demon lord named Diablo, who hates the idea of love and pulverizes wannabe geeks who bring their corny relationships online. After spending hours focused on his overpowered character, he got transported to a tower where two fantasy hotties welcomed him with their lips. Nice. While the Pantherian, who lacked growth hormone and the 500cc elf argued over which of them summoned him, he looked around and realized that he was in a world that looked a lot like his game and had apparently been summoned by two fantasy chicks that had the same IQ level as stereotypical Gen Z baddies. He then realized that he had the same powers from the game and reversed the enslavement spell they used on him, turning them into his slaves instead. While they made their way to town where the girls planned to escape from him, they introduced themselves as Shara Greenwood, the 500cc elf whose melons were causing him some serious mental health problems, and Rem Gallo, the pre-puberty midget pantherian. Apparently, they were adventurers who needed an extra hand for their quest, which was why they summoned him. After getting into town, they booked a room to catch some shut-eye, but when he realized that he would be spending the night with them, the otaku, who had never used the baby carrot he was born with, removed any plans of getting a good night's rest from his mind. Their slave and master roleplay session was interrupted by Celestine Baudelaire, the head of the local mages association, who wanted to know how a summoning could enslave the Pantherian. So they went to the pub where Takuma tried his best to scare Celestine with his demon lord aura and almost crapped his medieval leather pants when Gallic, her second in command, showed him what aura actually is. Remembering that he now had a shredded Sigma bod with maxed out stats, he leveled the playing field, and after Rem, who was being treated like a celebrity in hiding, rejected the offer to have bodyguards, the mages left. Takuma, who could smell fish in the air, picked up the fun-sized pantherian and went to force the truth out of her with special otaku torture techniques in the room. After she refused to spill the truth, the otaku, who had finally seen a reason to fulfill his psychotic creepshow fantasies, <laughs> yeah, boy. grabbed her fluffy ears and went crazy on them. The pleasure and fear combo she felt from his touch and the scary aura he was giving off made her nearly go brain dead. While everyone else at the pub as well as Shara eventually started to get worried about what he was doing to her, she ended up caving and made him swear to keep her truth a secret. To reassure her of his plans to stick by the promise, he hit her with the finishing move by her furry ears. She then told him that the reason she was being treated like a famous medieval jester was that the soul of the feared demon lord named Krebskom was inside her after being passed down by her mum. Krebskom's soul couldn't be removed from her body except through her death, which was why she was always being watched, as her death could unleash the nation-destroying demon lord to wreak havoc once more. Hearing this, Takuma promised to find a way to get rid of the demon's soul from her body and free her from being a cocoon. Later on in the night, Takuma, who was out for a walk, got ambushed by Gallic and some of the mages who summoned a level 30 salamander to turn him into burnt toast as revenge for his stunt at the pub, but the mutated gecko got vaporized by Takuma's explosion strike, and Gallic, who barely escaped becoming burnt steak, received an introduction to the strength of the demon lord. After waking up and realizing that he was still an overpowered demon lord, Takuma noticed that his hands were moving on their own, with the right lost somewhere in between Shara's mommy milkers and the left moving across Rem's chopping board chest. Wait a minute! Who are you? When the girls woke up and realized that he was performing creepshow activities on them, he diverted their attention to Rem's troubling lack of estrogen. On their way to the guild, he realized that the local people were not exactly heavy on the All Lives Matter cause and openly showed their racism. He, on the other hand, loved all the species, especially the ladies with freshly waxed milk jugs he saw at the guild. When they started measuring their magic levels, the girls had the expected amount of magic control. But when he checked his and almost plunged the town into the Dark Ages, they were pulled to the side by Sylvie, the guildmaster, who told him that they didn't have the necessary tools to measure magic of such aptitude, and therefore didn't know what kind of quests to assign to him. 
After he told them that he was too broke to care about the type of quests they had available, she gave them a quest from the Mages Association to find and retrieve the eyes of the Madara snake from the man-eating woods. He tried to use teleportation magic to get to the woods as that would be faster, but after they laughed at him for clearly missing some of the nuts in his brain. He noticed that there were actually some slight differences between the game he played and the world he was in, like the fact that the magic levels of the adventurers and people he came across were weirdly low. And unlike Cross Reverie, they couldn't respawn if they lost their lives in combat, which explained why no one was taking dangerous risks to level up. When they got to the forest, Shara noticed that they were being watched, and after she showed him where their stalkers were, he burned down the entire section. The people stalking them were elves from the Kingdom of Greenwood who were there to rescue their princess from the clutches of her creepshow master and force her to make them some royal elf babies. Takuma, who was initially shocked to find out that Shara was royalty, remembered that he actually knew the royal name but didn't pay much attention to anything about Shara aside from her milk jugs. Shara was a feminist who didn't want to go back to her patriarchal kingdom where she would be forced to wash dishes, eat royal muffins, and pump babies out of her body after clapping her designated elf husband. The elves, who saw Takuma as the only threat there, attacked him and failed horribly. <laughs> After temporarily turning their battleground into the perfect place for ice hockey, Gallic, who had set the whole thing up, came out and received a final warning from Takuma, who was done getting attacked by the mage with a bruised ego. After getting back to their room at the inn, Rem went to inform Celestine about Gallic's plans and Takuma, who used to be a Rizless geek, was struggling to talk to Shara, who then threw herself on him and asked why he chose Rem instead of her. He then used his new maxed out aura to establish dominance and grab her melons. His hands made the sacred regions tingle and after seeing the of her melons he and made her couldn't receive at the elven kingdom. Rem, who was back from making her report, walked in on them with bloodlust in her eyes as she had overheard Shara telling Takuma about how her 500 cc's made her better than Rem, who had skipped puberty. Sylvie called the squad to her office to give them a new mission. Celestine wanted them to deliver wine to the bridge of Ulug, but after noticing that the pay for the simple task was too high and likely Celestine's way of repaying what Gallic did with the elves, Rem, who didn't like handouts, decided to skip the quest. Outside the office, they met Emile Bichel Berger, the supposed strongest adventurer in the guild who was a very proud feminism activist. He had come to stop the slave trader from using Rem and Shara as his love toys, but after embarrassing himself multiple times, the girls explained how they liked being chained and dragged along like puppies. Emile then hid his shame behind a well-rehearsed fake smile and left after offering his help to Takuma if he ever needed it. Ulug was a fortress built to shield the city of Faltra from forest monsters and on their way to deliver the wine, the homeless nerd in a demon lord's body refused Shara's skinny dipping request as he was unable to handle such situations. He reminded her to focus on getting stronger but lost his composure when she pressed her milk jugs into his chest. Once they arrived at the fortress, the racist soldiers immediately surrounded them and wanted to attack Takuma, but they stopped when one of them recognized Shara. After proper explanations, they learned that an army of a hundred fallen was marching to the city, meaning that they would pass through the fortress. Seeing that the people needed more time to escape to the city, Takuma decided to stay and fight for them. Meanwhile, back in the city, Celestine visited Rem and told her that Gallic had been fired. She also didn't believe Takuma's story of being a demon lord and thought he was a fallen who was playing Playing mind games with Rem. Takuma, who was standing alone against an army of mutated zoo creatures, used the ten-foot beasts for target practice. While Rem and Celestine talked, Gallic came into the pub looking high on crack and demanded answers about his new life in the unemployment sector. He told them that he had assaulted the other mages after hearing he was fired and decided to gut himself with a living knife to save the world as the crack messiah. No! God, please, no! Rem's attempt to stop him with a shadow snake failed and after he stabbed himself, a fallen ripped through him like a cocoon. Meanwhile, back on the bridge, the midget elf leading the monster army decided to fail Face Takuma as he had become the main obstacle stopping their plan. The ogre, who had somehow managed to fit inside the knife Gallic used to gut himself, was there to eliminate Celestine. 
as she was the one maintaining the magical barrier protecting the city. Rem managed to escape with Celestine, but they couldn't get far as the ogre smashed the heads of the mages who were only good for Houdini tricks and chased the girls into a dead end. Emil, the lady stalker, finally decided to put himself to good use and showed up to defend them against the steroid pumping ogre. Meanwhile, back at the Bridge of Ulug, Diablo and the midget mutant leader were engaged in a fight too fast for the average eye. Seeing that she wasn't inflicting any damage, she used a sacrificial charge on him but ended up helping him pop his joint back in place. Shara, who then received word of what was happening in the city, informed him. This was part of the midget's plan, as Gregor the Ogre was meant to infiltrate the city ahead of the march and annihilate Celestine, making the city vulnerable for their monster march. Hearing this, Takuma stopped playing around and gave her one last warning before exterminating her entire army with White Nova. After seeing that she had somehow survived, he left with Shara and used transportation magic to reach the city, where Emil was about to join his weirdo ancestors. Takuma took over the fight and reversed the wannabe MMA sorcerer's magic with a sprinkle of demon lord power. The, light to take notes. the ogre tried using a black hole as a last resort, but it got reversed on him again and he ended up begging for his life as Takuma tripled the black hole's gravity on him before sealing him off in eternal darkness. Seeing his display of strength, the girls decided that they wanted to become Takuma's properties and serve as whatever he wanted. Tired from all the fighting, he bounced his dizzy head off Shara's melons and passed out after falling on Rem's ribcage. The people of the city spent the following days mourning their dead and gradually returning to their routine. After 10 days, Takuma, who was still sleeping in, regained his strength when Shara pounced on him. As she sat on his lap, she asked if he was ready to get his blood pumped as she had heard from Sylvia that men like the Demon Lord needed such activities to rejuvenate themselves. She was prepared to help him rise to the occasion, but Rem came in and drop kicked her off his body. They then started a heated argument despite Rem clearly being at a very significant disadvantage, and Sylvia came in and revealed that the Greenwood Kingdom had threatened Faltra with war if they didn't return Shara within 10 days. The guild wanted Diablo, the Demon Lord, to resolve the situation before it escalated. According to Sylvia, the Kingdom of Greenwood was ready to go to war against Lyferia to retrieve their princess. After hearing that the elf prince had put a bounty on his sister's head, Takuma got pissed as his harem dreams were being threatened, and Shara smothered his face with her melons to add to his motivation. Oh my god! Since they were in Faltra, the responsibility to oversee the issue fell to the local lord and Sylvia took them to meet the powerful figure who had single-handedly taken down Fallen similar to those Takuma fought at Ulug three decades earlier. In his office, he introduced himself as Lieutenant General Chester Ray Galford and explained that the local forces were unable to attack the elves as they were strongest in the forest. He also couldn't understand why the princess would leave her life in royal luxury to be a demon's love toy and a midget cat lady's co-wife. After she justified her decision with a desire for adventure, he spoke to Takuma to confirm his stance and entrusted him with the anti-war mission. He then introduced Alicia Cristella, a female imperial knight from the royal capital that was sent to oversee the group. Takuma was surprised to see a female imperial knight, as they were usually men with very high magic levels. His skepticism grew when she quickly became friends with the girls. He worried that she might see through his demon lord facade and reveal his true nature as an awkward nerd. Before heading to the elven kingdom, he took the group to a weaponsmith to get a weapon weaker than his staff, something that wouldn't obliterate everything he touched, and after getting it, they were about to leave when a smoke bomb went off and a group of dwarves kidnapped Shara for the bounty that was placed on her head. As he chased them down, two of the dwarves tried to block him but ended up as graffiti. Alicia and Rem dealt with the rest while he chased after Shara. The dwarves almost escaped but ended up getting caught by Emil, the creepy stalker who somehow knew where they were again. They tied up the dwarves and Emil carried them off to teach them a lesson. Takuma, worried about Shara, asked her to stay by his side for protection and as his girls clung to his arm, the Imperial Knight who was doing too much was told to relax and enjoy being a useless tag-along. They went to get food as the Knight's attention-seeking eventually exhausted her. The following day at a pub, Celestine approached them with news of a lead on the slave callers. A new slave trader had set up shop in the plaza and likely knew a thing or two about the callers that could help find a way to get them removed. 
Before entering the shop, Takuma mentally prepared himself for any unexpected challenges, but nothing could have prepared him for the classic display of civilized slavery he saw inside. The shop owner, who seemed to like outfits that struggled to hold on to her heavy assets, showed up and led them into her office, where she asked Rem about her child's gender after sensing great power coming from her womb and mistaking the demon lord's soul for a powerful baby. To divert attention from Rem's state as a demon cocoon, Takuma asked the lady to tell them about any information she had on the callers. She dismissed everyone except Takuma and Shara to maintain secrecy. Meanwhile, Rem, who was nearly exposed, sat outside and didn't notice the Imperial Knight casting a spell on her. In another part of the tent, the shop owner had dressed Shara in some top-of-the-line Medieval Times Victoria's Secret lingerie and instructed Takuma to explore and trace the magical flow through her. After he found a focus point on her chest, he used it to trace the magic, causing Shara to lose control and react uncontrollably to his touch. After placing his hand on her lower regions, he proceeded to fill her up with his essence according to the woman's instructions, while Rem and Alicia, who heard Shara's cries, started to regret their decision to stay outside. After failing to remove the collar, they returned to the inn where Takuma was drained from the failed experiment, but Shara was energized from his essence. After Alicia disappointed Takuma by choosing to sleep in another room, she met an elf at the door named Kira Greenwood, the first prince of the elven kingdom and Shara's brother. He came to take her back to the kingdom and almost got twisted like a pretzel by Takuma. He left after apologizing to Shara for neglecting her feelings and claimed that he would support whatever decision she made. Later that night, Shara, who had developed insomnia, was stargazing when Rem joined her. They talked about their future plans, with Shara wanting to own a cafe and Rem expressing her wish to work there after dealing with her problems. Shara then used the opportunity to feel Rem's tail, which happened to be a special spot for the Pantherian. After getting her prepped for a quick workout, Shara filled her up just like Takuma had done earlier, giving Rem a taste of the heavens while Takuma, who was trying to sleep, ended up listening to her screams for the rest of the night. Kira, who was playing a flute in the forest at midnight like a psychopath, revealed his true nature and desire to turn Shara into his personal baby-making machine. When Takuma was younger, he had a group of gamer friends he hung out with at the park, but after finding out that they only talked to him for his high-level equipment and gaming skills, he went into a state of depressed isolation. Soon after, his life took an unexpected turn that now had him overwhelmed by the attention of the magical maidens, who practically belonged to him. After waking up, Rem left to brief Celestine, and Alicia went to make a report at the palace. Takuma then decided to use the opportunity to craft healing potions with Shara while they waited for her brother's anticipated but ultimately rejected arrival. As he began transforming herbs into liquids, Shara's milk jugs captured his attention, and while he was distracted by her assets, his hands instinctively knew what to do and began preparing the potions. Eventually, Kira appeared outside the inn playing his flute and made Shara confess her unsettling desire for her brother's affection. She then left with him. What? leaving Takuma to share the unsettling news with Rem and Alicia before going back to his room to roll around in self-pity and depression. As the trauma of seeing Shara leave with her melons reminded him of his childhood and triggered his abandonment issues, Rem speculated that Shara might have been enchanted by Kira's flute, but since Takuma hadn't encountered such a flute while playing Cross Reverie, he had no idea of what it was or how they could alter its effects. Although they had no plan or idea of what to do, Rem decided to chase after Shara regardless and made Takuma embrace his role as a demon lord. Alicia, who was aware of the fact that she would become the team's dollar store Sakura, decided to abandon self-dignity and go with them. At Kira's camp, Shara, who was now thinking straight, was chained up by her brother, who questioned her about her actions under Takuma's influence. After she defended Takuma and told her Creepshow brother that she chose to be chained up and dragged by the Demon King, Kira released some slime creatures that slowly wrapped around her body. The creatures covered her and dissolved in preparation for Kira's plans involving the next generation of elf psychos. Fortunately, Takuma made it in time to save her after quickly clearing off his guards. Kira threatened him with war after realizing that his forces were defeated, but Takuma told him that he only wanted to see if Shara actually wanted to stay with her brother. When Kira attempted to manipulate Shara's mind again with his magic, Takuma used his authority over her to compel her to speak her true feelings. After confessing her desire to join Takuma's harem, Shara ended up triggering her brother who decided to unleash the elves' ultimate summoning art, a world-ending force hydra. 
The Hydra Kira released was another unknown beast, which reminded Takuma that the world he was in had a lot of differences from Cross Reverie. After instructing everyone to stand clear, he started his battle against the world-ending monster that he barely understood. Initially relying solely on his gamer instincts, Takuma expected the Hydra to have some regular traits that were typical with summonings, but as it continuously regenerated and unleashed attacks on him, he abandoned his gaming strategies and focused on offense. Shara, who was trying to help, told him that such summons typically had a core, which was the only vulnerable spot that could be used to take them down. The problem with the Hydra's core was that it constantly moved around in the monster's body, which made destroying it a bit tricky. But after finding his way under its belly, he unleashed Mato Izuna, a devastating attack that obliterated the Hydra from the inside out, destroying its core in the process. With the Hydra defeated, Takuma contemplated adding Kira to his list of vanquished foes, but after Shara begged him to spare her brother's life, Kira hightailed into the forest. Before he got far, his head lost its connection to his body after a swift slice took it off. Lord Galford emerged with his knights from the woods, fully intending to subdue the elves and seize Greenwood. His plan all along was to weaken the elven army through Diablo's efforts, which had made his job easier. After knocking out Celsius, he captured Takuma in a ritual spell used for containing formidable beasts. When Sakura's sister, the Imperial Knight, confronted him, he effortlessly split her sword in half, and Takuma, who was now good at sensing magical flows, traced the flow in his cage and shattered it. He then unleashed an explosion on Galford, who narrowly escaped and rained attacks on Takuma to stop him from easily casting any more spells or attacks. Using Supermind, Takuma managed to land a hit on his very swift opponent and littered the entire battlefield with mines. After Galford managed to waltz through the minefield, Takuma put him on ice. But the high-level general managed to break free and prepared a skill rivaling the Demon King's power to finish off Takuma, who then countered with Omit and blasted the persistent knight to defeat. Asserting his dominance in an attempt to make the general too scared to come after him again, Takuma portrayed himself as an overpowered protagonist who was sparing Galford so he could live with the weight of his weakness. Meanwhile, Rem tended to the injured elves with healing potions, and Takuma left the general to comfort Shara now that her creepshow brother was permanently vanquished. Three days later, life resumed for everyone except Takuma, who was weakened from his excessive use of magic and also chronically broke after technically defeating his employer. He was visited by Sylvia, who shared a bottle of magical sake with him to restore his energy and became his pillow after he got drunk and wrapped his arms around her underdeveloped body. After Alicia got to the Imperial Capital Palace to make a report on the Greenwood incident to the Emperor, she met Sadler, a sadistic paladin who had cut down a village of Demon Lord worshippers the night before. He told her about his intention to take a trip to Faltra after learning about a prophecy hinting at the Demon Lord's rebirth from a priest. In Faltra, Rem was giving Shara lessons in creature summoning and she managed to summon a turkey shot, which had the power to share its vision with its summoner. After initially dismissing the creature as useless, Takuma showed them its usefulness for spotting and attacking distant enemies far from their normal field of vision. After catching a whiff of bad morning breath and improper hygiene from Rem, Shara suggested a bath for the group. Takuma, who was scared of his impulsive thoughts and amplified testosterone, hid behind a rock as the girls took off their garments and entered the stream. While helping each other wash and teasing Takuma's innocence, they were interrupted by Edelgard who decided to take a different approach after being humbled by her recent defeat. She told them that she could sense the soul of the demon lord in Rem, and claimed that she knew of a ritual to resurrect Krebskolm without harming Rem. So they agreed to meet her at Starfall Tower on the night of the full moon. Shara, who didn't know that Rem was carrying around the world's most dangerous creature in her body, felt bad for her fellow concubine and gave her a hug to cheer her up. On the day of the ritual, they were dining at a pub when Alicia, who weirdly knew their location, told them to head back inside. While heading back, she told them about Sadler, the bloodthirsty paladin who was currently in town hunting down demon lord worshippers and would be particularly interested in a certain someone who claimed that he was a demon king and walked around with a slowly growing harem. As they turned a corner, they met the paladin and Alicia tried to protect them by claiming that they were regular adventurers. But Takuma's pride ended up making him blurt out the fact that he was a self-proclaimed demon king when Sadler asked for his name. The paladin initially silenced Rem, who was trying to speak up when men were talking. Known for their crazy strength levels and magic use, paladins like Sadler were said to be close rivals to Lord Galford in power. 
but Takuma quickly realized that the paladin who claimed to have a divine gift and purpose was really a masquerading sorcerer hiding his spells. When Sadler tried to use a Medusa-type spell to freeze him in place, his ring deflected the attack and caused irreversible emotional damage. As Sadler's followers carried him away, Takuma and the girls proceeded to the tower for Rem's ritual. Despite Alicia's surprising acceptance of Rem's complex situation given her status as an Imperial Knight, Takuma decided to play off his concerns and felt that his skepticism was because of his lack of social skills. At the tower, Edelgard had already prepared for the ritual and wasn't bothered by seeing Alicia with them. In order to revive the Demon Lord, Takuma had to fill Rem up with an enormous amount of magic, and after the first dose, Edelgard told them that it wasn't enough as he had to go deeper in order to reach the Demon Lord's soul. She initially suggested opening a hole in Rem to reach the Demon Lord, but seeing as that would likely end her life, they decided to search for other access points until they found one. There was a special hole that happened to be just perfect for the job, and it was located slightly above her little rice cakes. Takuma, who immediately knew of the Sacred Hole's location, took a second to get his tweaking brain in check before he inserted a finger into the magical hole and proceeded to hit it with a finger technique known only to seasoned veteran otakus. In order to get her to the apex point where she could release the fluids necessary to locate the Demon Lord's soul, he had to maintain a certain pace and rhythm. Once she started to reach the point of no return, he could finally see Krebscomb's soul and poured himself deep into the Sacred Hole, filling her up with the required amount of his essence to to get the Demon Lord's soul out of her. After an overdramatic smoke show, the Demon Lord revealed herself and was apparently an underage pipsqueak who didn't even have pubes yet. Takuma, who was no stranger to such situations, took his stance and got ready to annihilate the little bundle of evil cuteness who was also about to let him have the full might of her strength but realized that she had forgotten what her job was. When she started trying to figure out why she was allegedly meant to be a destroyer of mortals, they twisted her premature brain cells and assured her that her role wasn't to harm humans. After Shara tempted her with biscuits, sensing her hunger, the Demon Lord took a bite and realized that her great purpose was to become a biscuit enthusiast. Edelgard, who was struggling to keep a straight face while watching the madness unfolding in front of her, decided to support her obviously underqualified Demon Lord as that was her ultimate purpose in life. Since she was no longer perceived as a threat, they escorted her back to town and stuffed her with biscuits on the way, but while they walked to town, a mutated eagle named Eulorex with an exaggerated goatee suddenly appeared. Eulorex, an aged demon who had served two generations of demon lords, knew that something had gone wrong with the revival and immediately attacked, attempting to restart the resurrection process. But Edelgard interfered and stopped his assault. In frustration, he almost squashed her head and ended up forcing Takuma to strike back. Due to years of experience from serving generations of demon lords, Eulorex was able to dodge Takuma's attacks but ended up running with his goatee to avoid getting clipped. While the gang continued their trip back to town, they decided to change Krebscomb's name to Clem for her safety. Back at the inn, Rem went to sleep in Alicia's room while Clem and Shara revived the unconscious Takuma from his battle by pressing their bodies against him and transferring their magic by both reaching a powerful magical- in Alicia's room, she revealed her true intentions for Clem, which was for the Demon Lord to eliminate humans whom she apparently despised. Meanwhile, having finally escaped his own Medusa spell, Sadler vowed revenge against Takuma. The next day, the group gathered for tea and biscuits, during which Takuma took the opportunity to brief Celestine on their new circumstances with the latest addition to his harem being a world-ending biscuit-brained child. Surprisingly, she accepted the idea of the Demon Lord freely enjoying biscuits as long as she was under the superhuman condition of Takuma's harem. While getting back home, Takuma and Shara realized that Rem, Clem, and Alicia were missing. Alicia, who didn't like her own species, led them through an alley, where she confessed her mission to manipulate the Demon Lord into harming humans. She admitted to being the one who helped Gallic, the erratic mage, summon a demon during the initial fallen attack, and after Sadler showed up, she falsely accused Rem of being a demon worshipper who was kidnapping Clem, a biscuit-loving, innocent child for demonic purposes. After summoning an Indian bull that was probably getting worshipped and pampered, the paladin finished it off and captured Rem and Clem, who were then placed in a wagon. While they were being transported, the girls had a therapy session that started off with Clem offering Rem a biscuit and roasting her for being weaker than Prime Sakura. 
The demon lord had heard about how Rem and her family suffered from their lives as vessels for her soul, and she asked her why she tried to help her knowing what she was. Rem, who realized that Clem had spent all those years alone being passed down through the Pantherian women, felt pity for her and wanted to help now that she was finally free. The girls were then brought to a chapel in a cemetery while Takuma was getting a lot more worried and suspected Alicia's involvement in their sudden disappearance. At the chapel, Sadler justified his bloodthirsty obsession by claiming that it was his divine mission to purge corruption and Rem tried to sway the Psycho Knight's heart by reminding her of the time they spent together, but Alicia, who didn't like being emotionally manipulated, left her to Sadler. Takuma, who was getting desperate, went to find help at the guild, where a child's tip-off about Sadler's fight with Rem saved his reputation. Meanwhile, somewhere on the city walls, Lord Galford prepared for what appeared to be a second fallen invasion. Back at the chapel, Sadler started off his torture and Rem focused on keeping Clem sane. Pissed off by the little girl's nagging, Sadler tried to cut her down and ended up revealing her true identity. When he tried to finish her off, Rem jumped in to protect her and ended up taking three swords to the back. Seeing this, Clem erupted in rage and transformed into a colossal demon with unusually large metal melons, revealing her true form as the demon lord and remembering why she hated mortals. Shara, who caught up with Takuma, told him that she had used her lab experiment turkey summon to locate the critically injured Rem. While Takuma gave Shara all his recovery potions and sent her to rescue Rem, Alicia rendezvoused with Edelgard and Ularex, who were stationed with the fallen army just beyond the city walls. Edelgard emphasized Alicia's important role in their strategy to Ularex in order to keep the psychotic knight from becoming demon food. Meanwhile, Sylvia met with Lord Galford and advised him to leave the rampaging demon lord to Takuma and focus on the fallen army. Takuma ran laps around the cemetery like a mouse that fell into a cat's playhouse while dodging Clem's attacks with gravestones from Sadler's victims, and Shara, who managed to get to Rem, revived her and found out about Alicia's betrayal. With Takuma having exhausted all their potions, he was actually fighting for his life since he couldn't respond like in Cross Reverie. Emil, who used his Creepshow Stalker skills to find them, shielded the girls from a flying tombstone with his body and kept them safe, while Takuma circled the Demon Lord and kept setting traps around the cemetery to keep their battle from spreading out to the rest of the city, which Celestine was struggling to shield from the advancing fallen army with her weakening barrier. After completing his preparations, Takuma unleashed the Apocalypse Abyss, an attack that incapacitated Clem but didn't completely defeat her. After hearing Rem call out to her, Clem remembered their promise and ended up reverting to her original form, and Ularex once again let Edelgard have it for her consistent incompetence, which had once again cost their army valuable time. As the group reunited, Sylvia, who seemed to be the only one with a functioning brain, told them that the Demon Lord couldn't roam freely consuming biscuits anymore. So they proposed officially adding her to Takuma's harem, and after convincing her of the benefits of serving the self-proclaimed Demon Lord, she agreed. Using the contract stone, he made her the latest concubine and sealed the agreement with a kiss that would have been illegal in the real world. After returning to the inn, the girls changed into their Victoria's Secret undergarments and joined the drained Demon Lord in bed. Alicia then entered their room, held Shara hostage with a knife, and led them to another room where Edelgard was starting to see the light after the fallen army vented their frustrations on her for leading them on a wasted march. The biscuit-loving Lord healed Edelgard and convinced her to abandon her anti-human agenda for biscuit adventures with them. Struggling with self-forgiveness for her betrayal, Alicia attempted to unalive herself, but after sharing her childhood trauma and workplace abuse with Takuma, he got moved by her story of loneliness and abuse, having felt a similar isolation due to his lack of riz and self-respect until his summoning. After his heartfelt speech, Takuma started to get dizzy from weakness, and Clem reminded Shara of their magic rejuvenation ritual. So they made all the girls lose their sacred garments, aiming to rejuvenate Takuma through a combined effort, but seeing their different assets turned off the lights in his head, causing him to faint. The next day, Alicia started a new journey to live freely, while Takuma continued managing his slowly growing harem while settling into his new life as Diablo Sama, the overpowered demon lord with an addiction to clapping weirdos in skirts. 